Bible says that the trumpet will so let Jesus take care of the sin problem. It is really a heaven solution, a God solution. That's our emphasis. So we have assurance of salvation. And there is no force on earth that can withstand what God is about to do. Welcome to another study of God's word today. Today we have a new guest. I have the privilege of introducing him to you. He's none other than Alston. Alston D. Jarvis. Many of you say, who is he calling Alston? That's Devon. Yes, he is Devon. Jarvis, Elder Devon Jarvis. We're happy to have him here this morning. And you also know he's a singing evangelist. Very good one. And we also have Elder William Leslie Josiah. Debo. He is no stranger to us on this platform. But we welcome Devon today. We're happy to have him. And so we'll go into our lesson. But before we go into our study this morning, we're going to bow our heads and we're going to invite God's presence in our midst as we ask Elder Alston to pray for us. Loving Father, we are so thankful for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your grace and your mercies. Today we come before you, the unworthy children of men, seeking pardon and forgiveness. We pray, dear God, that your spirit may envelop us at this time, giving us clear minds, wisdom, and understanding. We pray that your light may illumine our path and give us the wisdom to do thy will. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And may the light of this world be filled and felt in our presence. These and other mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our memory text this morning, it says, No, all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admi admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. And that's taken from 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11. Restless and rebellious. Restless and and rebellious and we just had a memory text but our specific topic today is restlessness leads to rebellion i like that the way they put it you know but if we were writing it here in the caribbean elder alson we would say devil find work for idle hands <laughs> yeah. so elder alson we read our text here numbers 13 27 to 33 that's we're gonna go through that Okay, it says, and they told him and said, we came into the land whither thou sentest us, sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and, Jebus and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in this are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we in their sights. The lesson said that they started on a good note. They've been going around in circles in that wilderness. And now they're on the verge of the promised land, Canaan. And why is Caleb and Joshua says, go over and spy out that territory? What could have happened? Why we end up with this report, uh, Elder? The issues I believe we are facing here is seeing the 
well, they, they, they're not reflecting total faith in God. They were traveling for these almost two weeks, seeing God's miraculous hand at the Jordan, passing over. They were in want of water. God moved again and showed them his mighty power. And in this process here, at the point where they are on the verge of receiving that which God has promised them in leaving Egypt, he's going to take them to a place which is flowing with milk and honey, a promised land. They, in, in turn, after being in Egypt for so many years, couldn't muster the faith necessary, even with all those miraculous things God did for them in the past two weeks, they could muster that sort of faith to believe that God was fully able to do for them that which they saw as being impossible. So they came to this place where it was just, I, well, I don't know about you, but I will, I, I will not be going. That's just too much for me. So, well, <laughs> no, 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 not for me. <laughs> Elder Josiah, I, I like how Elder Jarvis set the stage there, man. This, this is thing. God has done so much for you, Elder Josiah. This small place now that he has brought you here and says, look, it is yours. Just go up and possess it. And you're having a problem accepting that he's able after he has done all these miraculous things, bringing them to eat, you know, they saw the snakes down there with Pharaoh, they displayed Pharaoh and Moses. Then they know what it is to have the blood and the door post and what happens. They know that they're serving a mighty, powerful God. What could happen here, Elder Josiah? And do we find ourselves in that same predicament at times? You know, as, uh, as Elder Jarvis uh, pointed out, you know, the lack of faith with the Israelites at the time. But also we have to look, and in, uh, in our modern time, we look on the psychology of, of how things work out in people's mind after being in a situation for a very long time. And I believe it's something that we, we, we talked about in a, a previous lesson where we talked about being in slavery for over 400 years. And God has, you know, been working with them throughout the, this period of time and in, in the end to take them out of slavery. Their mindset was not ready for the, 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 the things that God had prepared for them. So they revert back to the, the, what they know. And what they know was fear. The mm -hmm. fear to move forward because, you know, God, God was showing them that this is what I can do for you. But they let the, the, the fear take over them. And in, 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 in doing that, their heart becomes uh, uh, rebellious to the, to the point where they say, no, we can't do this. Elder Jarvis, yes, the lesson says that these doubters, 10 other spies that went, who said that we couldn't take this land, their voices became louder. They were dominant. That, that sounds to me like some situations I've found myself in. Mm -hmm. They almost want, you, you're there, you're right, but you're in the mi minority and people almost want to make you feel that the truth is a lie. <laughs> yeah. Your views on that. <laughs> you see, the, we, we face some peculiar challenges at times as people of faith. And when those times come, because we have developed a unique way of approaching life, we have a faith first, God's word first, believe and obey first. It sometimes brings us into particular conflict with those who do not practice those methods of living 
and it, 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 even sometimes it is it is resident in the body of believers that we are present in, where we, this is about our daily activity, the, the, the practices that we have developed for ourselves. And in doing so, we bring ourselves into a relationship with God and act based on what he has said to us. If without that process, persons cannot know and will not be able to hold on to God's promises just because those are his promises, because they do not have the experiential beliefs to be willing to just say, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. They, they're not to that place yet. And we, they, they, yes, at times we find that we are sometimes in the minority. And we, we, are, we question ourselves because of the great number of voices which are contending in the other direction. Am I really right? Uh, is, is this really what, what God in, intends for us to be doing right now? But the, 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 what I would like to encourage us is to stand fast, to stand and see the salvation of God, because God always comes through for those who stand for him. He stands for them. And that is without fault. That's the cart of God. And that is how he seeks to treat those who are obedient and faithful to all that he has called them to be. Elder Josiah, how easy it is to become yes. restless and rebellious. The book, you know, Psalms uh, 78 and verse 8, it talks about the, the, the children. But he talks about the Israelites and how they are stubborn and rebellious, rebellious in their heart. As long as you keep that kind of belief that uh, certain things are not possible, that's going to be the end result of what you're going to do. If you believe in God and believe that God says something and you keep that faith and knowing and you keep that belief that God is going to do something for you, working towards that, it will happen for you. Because God promises it never fails. But if you keep the belief that, you know, this is difficult. And that's how you approach things in life all the time. The journey for you is going to be a difficult one. It, in terms of the Israelites at that time, remember when they go and spy out the land, they could have come back and give a detailed report of who lived where, who is this type of people, they did their research in terms of where, where things are, who is this and who is that. But the thing is, didn't even think about forming a strategy. <laughs> they, they just depend on themselves, thinking that, okay, you know what? These people are too big. We can't do this. We can't. But the, 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 the funniest thing about it is that they realize who live where. <laughs> Where they are, who they are, they know who everybody was. Yeah. Yet, still come back and say we can't do it because they were depending on themselves and not God. Elder Jarvis, this statement have me here thinking, thinking all the while I'm looking at it and say maybe one of these guys can help me make sense of it. It says when we are restless at heart, we struggle. To walk by faith. That's in the second paragraph. I, I too, I too face an, a, an interesting concept when I, I, I saw it. The, the fact is, what is restlessness? Uh, point of being unsettled. Not being able to come to a place where of comfort. Not being able to bring your mind to... I hate to use this word again, to rest upon that which is known or that which is expected or that which is believed. So I am tossed. And when the Bible speaks about persons who are tossed about, 
we get to the place where we find that let not persons who are wavering think that they can receive anything from the Lord. Because that shows that faith isn't resident. My restlessness, when we are restless at heart, we struggle to walk by faith. Because faith is a response based on that which is sure. God always and in every opportunity seeks to prove himself to us as his people. And when we act in accordance with that which he has directed, he shows up and gives us confidence that we can trust in his word. Our faith, our act of faith takes hold and we go forward and then God confirms that what we have done is acceptable to him and he moves us faith by faith position as we grow in grace and knowledge of truth. So here we have the contrast. The restlessness is the position of being unsure, being unsettled, being doubtful of that which God has declared. And when that doubt takes root, faith cannot be established. Faith cannot be displayed. And we have the very opposite of faith. And the restlessness really is the overarching circumstance which draws us away from God and his word and causes us to be so displeasing in the sight of God. The memory text talks about, you know, these are things as for an example for us. And I will always go back to the beginning to use uh, Adam and Eve just to give us an idea of what restlessness can lead to. It talks about Eve was walking, you know, and then she was confronted by the snake. Mm -hmm. You know, in the beginning, you talk about the devil flying works for either hand. So mm -hmm. just imagine uh, God gave you all the right instructions. And just because of curiosity, you let the devil get into your head where he's going to tell you opposite of what your creator give to you. And it leads to the problem that we have today in mankind, being rebellious, left on, our, left on our own. You know, so God is always seeking to put us back in the right direction. But our, our natural uh, tendency is always to go away from God just because we were curious about who we are and what we, th we think that we can become by ourselves and that would always lead, lead to destruction so as long as you 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 uh, keep that tendency in your heart you're going to be drawn away from god by the devil so we always have to depend on god for everything or else we're going to fall on the wayside i, I always think but maybe i'm wrong um elder josiah jarvis is that the devil really find works for either hand. The guy who doesn't occupy himself with work find himself hanging out somewhere with guys who are going to introduce him with some dangerous substance, some criminal activity. And sometimes it appears to be the same in church. The people who are less active or inactive in ministry, they're not getting themselves involved in any ministry. They see the most things to cause the most challenge and they doubt the most things. I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Elder Jarvis. Well, the fact is we are admonished that it is because we are inactive why we have challenges in, in, within the congregation. The, the, it is vitally true that the devil finds work for idle hands. We are, we are not within ourselves fully capable of resisting. We're not capable of preventing ourselves from going the road in which is unfavorable. We are subject to sin. It is 
because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, our tendencies, our proclivities, we are just inclined to do evil. Now, what God wants us to do, what does God want us to do, is reflected in the, the sanctuary service. We have the altar of incense, table of showbread, seven golden candlesticks. We have to study, pray, and be the light to the world. Without our activity of being the light to the world, the triune act cannot be, be, be made complete within us. And we lack. And because of our lack, something comes in its place. And we are then drawn away into that which is unsavory and cannot rightly represent God, no matter how much we know and how much we pray. Just the act of witnessing, doing something for others, because it is within this action where we are serving others that we become complete in Christ. And he is able to do this work of transformation that is so necessary and needed in us. So we are become perfect reflectors of his goodness, grace, and mercy. But it is a fact that whenever we fall to idleness and we are not impressed nor are on the charge of seeking to serve others for the sake of Christ, we do bring ourselves into a place of difficulty where we are not as useful as we could be if we were following the precepts that were set before us. Numbers chapter 14, 1 to 10. And we are winding down on time, so I don't think we're going to get the chance to read it, but I know that you will probably read it. And, but things seemingly got worse there. That Caleb has to be asking these guys, look, all I'm asking you not to do is not to give up on God. Fine. What? Just I want to give me some perspective of what's happening here. You know, we talked about doubt earlier on. And when the people came back with the negative report, and he says that the negative, the doubters, their voice becomes more pronounced than the people with the good report. And it, it, you know, that it's, it becomes kind of contagious, knowing that the mindset of the people. So everybody believe, no, no, we can't do this. You, you talked about earlier about separate people in, in the church. If you go, if you, if you go back to number 16, it talks about Korah. Mm -hmm. And he was a man that was, you know, uh, Moses was leading the people. And he think that, you know what, you're not doing a good job and this and that. And then he rallied his people. This is what he did. He rallied his people. So a lot of people believed him and started go against Moses. And Moses was telling them, you're not going against me. You're going against God. I warned him. I tell him you're not you're not you're not fighting against me. My message is from God to to help you to go further. But they didn't stop, and it, it brings back when we talked about having a rebellious heart because of the things that you carry in your heart. It leads them to destruction. It's, the Bible tells us that the earth opens up and swallowed him, his household, everything, because. They didn't believe in what God has had for them. Mm -hmm. And that is a warning for us today. When we find ourselves idle in the church, we become complacent and then we become uh, targets of Satan to do his will. So we have to be very, very careful of the life that we are living even as Christians and not taking heed to God's word. God's word. Mm -hmm. They're out there saying, look, you bring us here in this Numbers text. You bring mm -hmm. us out in this wilderness. It's best you had left us there in Egypt to die. You, you bring <laughs> us out here now to die. Probably would have died from hunger, uh, the, whip, the whip of Pharaoh. But now you bring us here to die by the sword. <laughs> What's happening? 
<laughs> yeah, I, and this is I mentioned earlier that they were keen enough to evaluate and to determine where you can find who in the land. The, 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 the Canaanites were by the coast and by the Jordan. We have the Amorites and the Hittites, Jebusites, they were in the mountains and so forth. So they were able to analyze and, and, and have the keys which would facilitate them at least bringing a strategy as to how they'll be able to, to attack. However, that wasn't the course that they chose to take. The analyzing went even further in determining you have brought us into this place for our wives and our children to be prey. Here they are, they're on a downward spiral and it's just getting worse and worse. God took them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm and brought them to a place where he's promised to give to them. And here they are saying, well, I don't know how it is that you could have brought us here. You are making us victims in our situation. We need to find somebody who will lead us back into slavery. We are going to walk from this place of freedom and victory to go willingly back into bondage following the enemy and we understand what Egypt represents spiritually. Here these the people of God declaring that they are going to willingly and willfully walk back into the clutches of the enemy. That is a slap in God's face. And to the point where they let us take stones to kill these men <laughs> because <laughs> they are leading us to our doom. It is unbelievable what people would come up with when they are in these positions of unfaithfulness. And, and, just, and just to remind us that the Israelites just recently came out of Egypt. Can you imagine? You're talking about the people that are before you. And coming out of Egypt, it was Pharaoh and his armies. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about soldiers yes. that were after them. And they see what God did to Pharaoh and his armies. Yes. And still have doubt about going forward to a, 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 a people that they, like I said, they took time to to analyze everything. So they yeah. could have they could have strategized and say, okay, this is what we do. One, you know, Caleb had a good report and said, we can do it because he believed in God. Yes. Just as how God could have, you know, opened the sea, the waters and swallowed up Pharaoh and his army, he could have done the same thing for them. Or even them more. Step forward. Hey, God is a mighty God. Amen. Oh, God is a mighty God. <laughs> How God deals with this situation. They, didn't, they, they were hitting at Moses all along in the wilderness, but now they said, look, they're asking, did God, you, you imagine that, where they've gotten to, that they say God brought them there. They're not saying Moses anymore. God brought them there to die by the sword. That, <laughs> that is amazing. This God who has been protecting them by day and by night, the pillar of fire, the pillar of cloud by day to shade them and give them the food that they needed. Wow. It's, what's the spiritual lesson here to be had? Yeah, you know, God tells us that we should always depend on him. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus came and says, he is the true vine. We should, we should abide in him at all mm -hmm. times. You know, when, before the flood and, and, and man, man started to, you know, get rebellious against God. God says, man's heart is evil continuously. Yes, so with the Israelites, when they let uh, this evil thought come into them, it, you know, it's, it, it, it keeps it keep driving away the driving them away from God to the point where they say, God brought us here to kill us. 
So when God was saying man's heart is evil continuously, that is the example of what he was trying to give to us. To show when we don't depend on him for everything, this is where we're going. So the lesson for us is to always, always depend on God for every situation in our lives. Amen. We, Damien, um, you get the last word. You need to summarize because time is up on us. So you get the last word. You tell us and give us some instruction of how to conduct ourselves. Because you see, even if you have good leaders, because Josh and Caleb, they, they were good leaders. And they, they still met with this, but the response of the leader was different. And sometimes the leaders get caught up in the whole displeasure and it make it worse. But um, you get the opportunity to close us out with a closing thought this morning and bring somebody to a good understanding of what God requires of us. Verse 8 says, if God delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. This was the entreaty that was given to these people. God never fails. God never acts in a way that will cause you as an individual to fall upon your face because you trust in him. God is faithful. God is always able. The enemy may have some power, but God has all power. And what we need to do is to rest upon his word and be satisfied with that which he has given to us. And he will move mountains Amen. from before us and create plains and, 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 and plains for us to walk. The children of Israel give to us a clear picture of the example of those who have not developed this relationship of faith within God. God, in all of his miraculous things in Egypt and at the Red Sea and the short period they were in the wilderness, was not perfectly reflected in the influence it had on their minds because they were spectators in God's miraculous doing and not recipients of uh, the impression that it would make in the life of these individuals so that when it came down to the personal decision since God was not the one who was doing all the work for them they didn't see the benefit of their action in any way shape or form God did all the work at the Red Sea he did all the work when they were in need in Egypt to be released he did all the work they were just the beneficiaries of it now they are required to use these experience of what God was able to do to support their actions in going in and to possess. But they were not able, they were not to that place. Their, their, their life's experiences were not based on faith. And here at this critical juncture where they needed to step forward, they said, no. We are going to walk backward. We are going in the opposite direction. And God is really keen on bringing us as his people to a place where we can rest assured that we can trust in him. He wants to have this relationship with us. He wants to bring us to this place where, can, we, can, where we can trust and believe his every word. And in doing so, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he believes that we can be all that he desires for us to be as long as we avail ourselves and be completely immersed in this experiential relationship with him. Because it is in doing so that we will find rest unto our souls, and not restlessness, where our faith will develop and become stronger, where we will begin to walk step by step 
in newness of life in the way in which God will have us to go. And we will walk into the new Jerusalem because God has become our leader and we have become willing and obedient followers and doing all that God has required us to do. Amen. So I pray that we will, we will pick up these very small habits of step-by-step step following God, doing his will daily as we continue on this journey. I want to thank both gentlemen, both elders this morning did an excellent job of reviewing this difficult lesson. And so thank you. And as we go out today, remember to wear your mask, exercise your physical and social distancing and always sanitize. COVID is real and the life you save may be yours or someone you love. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. Do you hear that, boys and girls? It's almost here. Our first ever children's crusade under the theme, Let's Go to Heaven Together. The Jennings SDA Children's Ministry is inviting all the boys and girls from the church and community. Oh, yes. We have so many exciting activities just for you. Come out and experience a puppet show, craft time, health nugget, and a special night to have fun in Galore, and a whole lot more. Beginning at 6.30 p.m. nightly from Sunday 18 July and ending with activities on Saturday 31st July 2021, all at the Jennings Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let's learn about how we can be saved, no matter how small we are. I can't wait to see you there. So many rewards in store. Be there.